Math 110, Graphing Inequalities in Linear Programming, Sections 6.7. Example number one, it says graph y is less than x plus 3. Now when we're graphing this, we want to pretend like this symbol here is really an equal sign. So this is going to say y equals x plus 3. Now because this is in y equals mx plus b form, we know that my slope in this case is going to be 1, and my y-intercept is going to be 3. So I can take that information and I can start plotting it on the graph. My y-intercept is going to be 3, and then because my slope is 1, it's going to go up 1 over 1, up 1 over 1. Then I actually need to take a look at this symbol here. Because this says less than and not equal to, it's going to be represented by a dashed or dotted line. And so now that my line has been graphed, I need to pick a region to shade. Because when we're dealing with inequalities, it's always going to represent a region or a set of values that are going to work. So basically, I just need to find which region is going to be true or false. Now, the easiest point to pick is always going to be 0, 0. And you can use 0, 0 as long as it's not you know, a point that's on the line itself. So in this case, 0, 0 is not on this line, so I can pick it. And so I take that 0, 0, and I plug it into my graph. And so I'm going to get 0 is less than 0 plus 3. That's a true statement, so this side is going to be considered true. If this is my line, and I picked 0, 0, that means that everything on this side is going to be shaded. And so you shade the side that's true. So a recap of what I did here. First step, I graphed the inequality by pretending that there is an equal sign. And so that's why it looks like the y equals mx plus b form. My y-intercept is 3, and so that's why I was able to put a dot on 3 where it crosses the y-axis. And my slope, it went up 1 over 1, and so that's how I was able to create um, the line. The second step, if there's no line under it, that means it's going to be dotted, and if there's a line under it, it's going to be solid. Because solid line means that I can also include the values on the line as part of my solution. And so there was no line under it, and so that's why it's going to be a dotted line. And then step three, pick a point and plug it in, shade the side that's true. I pick 0, 0. So I take 0, 0, and I need to plug it in. And so I'm going to get 0 is less than 0 plus 3, which is a true statement. And so I shade the side. That's true. And example number 2, it says graph 3x plus 4y is greater than or equal to 12. So first step, I want to graph the inequality and pretend that there is an equal sign. Now when we graph it in standard form, all we need to do is examine the intercepts. So the way that we do that is pretend my y is 0. And so if it's 0, then I just get the equation 3x equals 12. Solving for x, I get x equals 4. And then you do the same thing, except now we're going to pretend that my x is 0. And so if my x is 0, then I just get 4y is equal to 12, which means my y is 3. And so that's how I can plot my intercepts. Some people say, oh, well, if you just cover it up, then you set 3x equal to 12, cover this one up, then you get 4y equals to 12. However you want to look at it, it's just the idea that you're trying to plot and find the intercepts. And so because there's a line under it, okay, it's going to be solid. We can include the solution. And so now I want to pick a point, plug it in to, say the, to shade the side that's true. Once again, I want to pick 0, 0. When I plug in 0, 0, I get 0 is greater than or equal to 12, which is a false statement. Now, it's kind of like it's a dichotomy here, meaning that one side is going to be false and one side is going to be true. And so I can assume because this side is false, that this side is automatically going to be true. And so now you shade the side that's true, which is step three, and so that's going to be my represented solution. We could also graph vertical and horizontal lines. 
And so in this case, x is greater than negative 3. And so it's going to be a dotted line because there's no line under it at x equals negative 3. Once again, you can pick a point. If I pick 0, 0, there's no y in this equation here or in this inequality. So I ignore that y point, but I still plug in the 0 value. And so I get 0 is greater than 3, negative 3, which is a true statement. Shade the side that's true. y is less than or equal to 4. So graphing the inequality, pretending it's an equal sign, you get this, state, this solid line here because there's also a line under it. Pick any point, pick 0, 0 again. I get 0 is less than or equal to 4. That's a true statement. Shade the side that's true. Now we can also graph a system of linear inequalities. Now the solution to a system of linear equalities is where the, where, where the in regions are going to intersect. And so in this first one, because these are both in standard form, we do the same thing again to be able to graph this, cover this up. Okay, so my x is 4, and then I cover up the other one. x is going to be 4, or I'm sorry, y is going to be 4. And now because there's a line under it, it's going to be a solid line and then now I need to pick a region to shade and so I try this point here 0 0 I get 0 plus 0 is less than or equal to 4 that's true and so I just drew like a brief sketch of that region I shaded the side that's true then you do the other one cover up the Y you get X is 2 cover up the X you get Y is negative 2 there's a line under it so it's going to be solid so once again because it's not crossing that point there, I can pick 0, 0 again, and I get 0 is greater than or equal to 2. That's false. So this side is going to be false. This side is then automatically true. You shade the side that's true. And now because this is the region in which they intersect, I shade that in darker. And that's going to be my solution. In example 6 here, I have three inequalities here that I'm going to graph. Cover up the y, you get x is 2. Cover up the x, you get y is negative 6. Solid line. Pick in a region that shades, do 0, 0. And so I get 0 is less than or equal to 6, which is true. So that's why I shade this. x minus 3 is less than or equal to 0. Add 3 to both sides. Okay, you're going to get x is less than or equal to 3. Pick a point. It's going to be true if I pick 0. And so that's why I shade this side here. This equation, because it's 0 here, the standard form won't work because both the x and the y-intercept are at 0. So I have to subtract the x and put it into my y equals mx plus b form. And so here... My y-intercept is 0, but my slope is negative 1. So it's going to go down 1 over 1, down 1 over 1. And so I can sit there and do that. Solid line, so I can graph it. Now because it crosses 0, 0, I can't pick 0, 0 as my point to test. So maybe pick a point that's like right next to it. So I pick 1, 0. Now if I plug in 1, 0, that's going to be true, because 1 is going to be greater than 0, greater than or equal to 0. And so this side is going to be true. This side was false. And so shading the region which, which they all intersect is going to be this region right here. That's the region in which they all intersect. Now in linear programming, uh, this is going to be used in various business applications. Um, linear programming basically tells us how to find the maximum or minimum value of a given scenario. Now when we do linear programming, there's going to be a set of constraints. These set of constraints lead to a feasible solution, or at least a set of feasible solutions. And then within those feasible solutions, there's going to exist a maximum or minimum for our objective function. Now the procedure in which we're going to do this is we're going to create our objective function and our set of restrictions. Then we're going to graph the region of feasible solutions. 
then we're going to determine the coordinates of the vertices of the region, and then we're going to evaluate the objective function at each vertex, which basically means we're plugging those coordinates back into our objective function. And then the largest and the smallest of those values are going to be the maximum and minimum values of the function. So here's our problem. This is dovetail carpentry shop makes bookcases and desks. Each bookcase requires five hours of woodworking and four hours of finishing. Each desk requires 10 hours of woodworking and three hours of finishing. Each month, the shop has 600 hours of labor available for woodworking and 240 hours for finishing. The profit on each bookcase is $40 and on each desk is $75. How many of each product should be made each month in order to maximize profit? What is the maximum profit? So I'm going to be looking for the max. So let's start taking this problem apart. So the first thing that I want to do is I want to be able to create the objective function and the set of restrictions. And so it's going to be a lot easier for me to just represent this in terms of x's and y's. And so I'm going to let x be the number of bookcases and y be the number of desks because it's going to be a lot easier notation wise. And so the first thing we need to look for is what is the problem asking me? And so it says how many of each product should be made each month in order to maximize profit? So it's talking about profit and it wants me to find what that maximum profit is going to be. So what I want to do is I want to look at this entire scenario and say, okay, what information is talking about profit? And in this case, it's $40 per bookcase and $75 Per dex. So I can say my profit is $40 per bookcase plus $75 per desk. Now I have to create my set of restrictions. And so I have to look at this and be like, okay, what are my list of restrictions? Now the first constraint that I have is going to be the time for woodworking. Because he says that he only has six hours of labor available for woodworking. So where in my problem is it talking about woodworking? It says he uh, takes five hours for each bookcase and it's 10 hours for each desk. So I can say five hours for bookcase plus 10 hours per desk has to be less than or equal to a maximum of 600 hours for woodworking. The next that I have is going to be finishing. And so he has a 240 hours for finishing. And so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to create another constraint based on that finishing. And so I have four hours for each bookcase and I have three hours for each desk for a total of 240 hours. So it's going to be 4x plus 3y is going to be less than or equal to 240. And then the other two types of constraints that we have to put in there so we can't produce negative desks, we can't produce negative bookcases, and so it's going to be x is greater than or equal to zero, and y is greater than or equal to zero. And so now I have my objective function, and I have my four constraints. So now what I need to do is I have to graph the region of feasible solutions. And so basically I take these four constraints and I put it on a graph. Now, just like with a system of inequalities, there's going to be a region in which every single one of these like overlap. And that's this region right here. Okay, that's this region right here. And so what I want to do is I want to be able to find what are those vertices in which everything cross because those vertices are going to be what my solution is going to be about. And so my vertices is going to be 0, 0, 0, 60, 60, 0. And then to find this one, because it's really hard to just like take a look at like the graph and be like, oh yeah, clearly that's 24, 48. Um, we learned a few lessons ago that to be able to find that point, we can use the elimination method from those two equations and we're going to get the solution x being 24 and my y being 48. And so now that I know what those vertices are, 
what I'm going to have to do is I'm going to have to take those vertices and I'm going to plug them in to my objective function. So I plug in 0 in for x, 0 in for y on this one, 60 in for x, 0 in for y on this one, etc. all the way down and I wanted to find what my maximum was going to be. And so in this case my maximum was 4560 and so the carpentry shop will make a maximum profit of 4560 when 24 bookcases and 48 desks are produced and sold.